Alright, welcome to your lesson today on classes, part two, where we'll be learning how to use our new class based on the class that we made in our previous lesson last week. So, how do we use a class that we've created in a different file? To do this, it requires two steps. The first is to create or import the class file itself, which we did in our previous lesson, and the second step is to create an object of that class or an instance of that class in a new program and that's what we're going to be doing today. But before we can create that file in a new program, we have to make sure that this new program is going to be able to find the file we previously created. So for example, the bank account class that we created in our previous lesson. This can be done in two ways. Number one, you can ensure that both files are stored in the same folder. Java will automatically look for any additional classes required to run a program in the folder that it's currently in. If you decide you want, for organization purposes, to store your files in different folders, you have to add the new folder as an additional class path in the preferences of Dr. Java, just like we did with all of the console files in the library class. So now that we've created a program, we want to access our new class. We can do this by calling the constructor of our previous class, just like we've done with all other objects we've created so far. So for example, when we're using string buffers, we say string buffer, whatever your name is, equals new string buffer. That will run the constructor of the string buffer class that someone else has coded somewhere else. Once initialized, you can then start to use methods on the objects that you've created. Again, just like we've done with everything else we've done in Java so far. So for example, with that string buffer s we just created, I can now run the append method by doing s.append. If you've decided to create methods that, ha that are static, that means you can access them without having to create an object first. So to do this, you type the name of the class followed by the name of the method. Again, just like we've done with all of the other things we've used before. So for example, math is the math class dot random will generate a random number because that class or that method in that class is a static method. Okay, so let's take a look at how we would do this with the bank account class we pre created in the previous lesson. So I've created a skeleton class here, calling it the bank class, and this is just basically going to make a bank account and do some of the methods with it. So the first thing we need to do is make a bank account. So again, just like we do before, we put the name of the class that we're trying to create, bank account. I'll just call it account1, but you can call it whatever you like as long as it follows our proper naming rules. And it's going to be a new bank account. And then you have to provide it with whatever arguments are going to satisfy the parameters of those constructors. So if you remember from the previous day, we had two different constructors. One requires two strings and a double, or the other constructor requires just a st two strings. So in this case, I'll make one that's going to be called, so let's see, we need to give it the name and the holder. So it's going to be my savings account. And it's going to be the account holder is Mr. Burns. And I'm going to deposit one million dollars. Okay. And that's it. I've now created a line of code that is going to allow me to create a bank account object. And now once I have that bank account object, I can start doing things with it. So I can say, well, let's deposit something. So I'm going to go account one dot deposit. And I'm going to deposit 50 cents. Okay. Then I could do a withdrawal. So I'm going to print to the screen a withdrawal. So I'm going to do account one dot withdraw. Now is it withdraw or withdrawal? Let's see. Go down and check the method here. Withdraw and the amount that I want to withdraw. So I'm going to withdraw three dollars. And let's see what happens when I run this. So it said true, right? Which it was supposed to do. It was able to withdraw the $3 from my bank account. So it's very simple. I can make as many bank accounts as I want, just like we could make as many strings or string buffers as we want, just by creating them. And then another new bank account. 
This one's going to be my checking account. It will also be Mr. Burns's bank account. And this time I'm not going to have any money in it to begin with, and maybe I can do something like a transfer. So I can do, let's see, when I do a transfer, it's going to go uh, which bank account I want to transfer money to. So I'm going to transfer from account one dot transfer to account two and I'm going to transfer fifty dollars and then I'll print c dot print the balance of account two let's see what happens There we go. Account 2 had nothing in it. I deposited $50. Away we go. So that's it. It's a brief introduction on how you use a class that you've created in a previous file. Um, hopefully you've learned something and we'll see you in class tomorrow where we can practice what we've learned.